Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleagues Jim Patterson and Paul Estabrooks. Jim and Paul will be today's presenters and will discuss the topic of Achieve Better Business Outcomes with Effective Strategic Portfolio Management. This webinar is a new addition to our series of Strategic Portfolio Management webinars, so if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again, and I'll now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thanks, Robert, and welcome, everybody. We're excited to give you this topic here today on achieving better business outcomes with effective strategic portfolio management. Let's talk about where we've been and how that transition is going to evolve uh, the way we do things in the future. You know, traditional project and portfolio management disciplines have been with us now for at least a couple decades. And it really has helped organizations advance their capabilities and their effectiveness in delivering on projects and programs, et cetera, within organizations. And we've really moved the ball forward on, you know, clarity and consistency of project management, you know, help define clearer objectives, you know, make planning operations more realistic and complete, and then just optimize the allocation of resources, all the things tactically that we're doing and bringing it all together in a port into a portfolio management process as well as beginning the ideas of strategically aligning with projects. And where we're going today, that really comes to the forefront as well as some other dimensions that we're gonna talk about. And that really moves us into the uh, discipline of strategic portfolio management. You know, when you look at the analysts, and we're gonna cite Gartner quite a bit today. Um, and Gartner defines strategic portfolio management market as a set of business capabilities, processes, and supporting portfolio management technology. Well, how is this different? Well, one is it really does focus on the overall strategy of the organization and the move to overall enterprise program management offices to focus on organizational wide, not just departmental or business unit type of objectives. Um, it really is there to help strategic portfolio management or SPM support enterprise wide strategy to execution alignment and then adaptation of those strategies through that execution, um, you know, and that SPM, if we're going to move into this next generation uh, to get the desired business outcomes, we have to not only map strategy with our initiatives or our projects, we also have to include other dimensions of this, such as business capabilities that we're trying to achieve or sustain, um, physical products that are impacted, applications that are need to support these things and the projects themselves. So it, becomes not just a singular uh, one-dimensional focus or two-dimensional focus, it, it really becomes a multi-dimensional focus to factor in as we prioritize and execute on these things. So we must define and prioritize the business strategies, manage the execution of these initiatives and the projects, and those should be done to support the achievement of the overall strategies. And in this, you have to have involvement, Right? And we'll talk more about the effectiveness as we get more players involved. But three key stakeholders in SPM are the leadership who sets the direction of the strategies, the IT management who owns the critical assets in the infrastructure, and then the execution teams that actually have to deliver on the projects that we decide to do. So this is really about enabling overall organizational agility while focusing on the right things. You know. In order to achieve this, there's certain things that must be done, and here's a handful of them. You know, include enterprise strategy in the prioritization process. You know, ensuring that the relevance of this strategy is communicated and clear to all parties, and then use that as a dimension for your trade-off decisions on whether or not something should be done, or whether something should be done in advance of something else or in lieu of something else. And also, this trend towards an EPMO rather than departmental PPMOs really helps to expand that influence here to be able to have the big picture, to support leadership in what they want to do with their strategies, and also have their finger on the pulse to trigger actions that are needed by anticipating changes impacting the organization, whether they be internal or external. Uh, and then, you know, COVID is a great example, but you know, resolving emergent business disruptions. You know, business disruptions can come from the outside, it can come from the inside. But by investing in strategic portfolio management technologies, we help to uh, enable this better 
and bring these things together and bring these into focus by leveraging technology. It doesn't supplant us being able to execute on that from a, a personal perspective or a people perspective or a culture perspective, but the technology definitely helps enable move us forward. So why should we do this? Well, it's because strategic portfolio management and doing it effectively improves business outcomes. You know, Gartner has found, and they did a survey that we're citing in here today, of well over 300 organizations. And they found that organizations that become highly effective at strategic portfolio management are twice as likely to achieve better business outcomes as those that aren't. Some key findings, just at a high level, is that organizations that effectively connect portfolio management processes to enterprise strategies are over three times more likely to achieve strategic portfolio management as a discipline and achieve the, uh, the realization of those benefits. You know, organizations that expose dependencies between work and strategic goals significantly increase the likelihood of achieving SPM uh, outcomes. And as also as organizations move to more product-centric delivery mark, uh, models, um, getting the, the delivery teams involved in the portfolio reprioritization decisions that sometimes they were not involved in in the past, the odds of achieving effective SPM increased by 2.7x. And the organizations that take it another step further and are good and nimble enough to dynamically reallocate resources based on changing strategic priorities in this dynamic marketplace are 5x more times likely to achieve SPM success. So what are some of the actions that we can take? Um, you know, the old PPM model, the focus was really on you know, delivering things on time and on budget. And, you know, that was great and we got better at doing those things. But in this new world, if we really want to uh, achieve the business outcomes, we have to do more. Uh, we have to connect enterprise strategy to portfolio management process to make sure and communicate that the relevance of that strategy is clear to all the people involved and that proper trade-off decisions on our decisions on what we're going to be working on and when is incorporated into that prioritization process and into the logic behind that. Um, we also have to discover the dependencies that trace the work to the delivery teams and how they track to the strategic goals so that they're fully aware of what it is that they're supporting and possibly have visibility for them coupled with value metrics to help us stay in alignment with that. Um, also, increase the involvement of the delivery teams in the portfolio reprioritization decisions um, really uh, is going to move the ball forward because they are an important player into the mix and they may have insight onto constraints or other factors that we don't uh, at a leadership or even an EPMO level. And another key piece in this finding was that, you know, oftentimes we've had these reprioritization and planning cycles within organizations. Some do annual plans, some do biannual, some do quarterly, more cyclic, cyclical type of reprioritization that might be done as far as a cadence. But being able to interject a more event-based approach where significant events or things that require us to really reorient our strategies and factor that into rejiggering our portfolio based upon those things and having that as part of our culture and our process is something that is a mature uh, SPM um, um, uh, aspect that we should strive to get into the mix. So to be effective with SPM, there's three key elements here that, that, that Gartner has identified, that you need to have the portfolio alignment that we're talking about. We need to have value-driven decision-making. Are the things that we're doing going to drive value for the organization, for our customers, et cetera? And then having that ongoing portfolio flexibility so that we could be nimble and responsive and agile in the way that we respond to changing conditions in the market, in our customer base, or whatever other things that may come in as far as opportunities or threats. So there's real tangible benefits to pursuing this. You know, the, the, the question might be, why should this be important to us? Well, organizations that are highly effective at these things are more likely to drive better outcomes and responding to disruptions like COVID-19. And those disruptions in, in these surveys, have, you know, could be defined as, you know, things in the business environment. It could be internal or organizational disruptions or ongoing uh, internal or external change. That, that, that just might be part of an evolution. But the likelihood of achieving positive business outcomes from effective strategic portfolio management, if you look at the dark blue versus the light blue, this is um, in the organizations that were surveyed in here, um, the dark blue um, is kind of 
the rest of the organizations that aren't effective in portfolio, strategic portfolio management, the light blue are those that are. And look at some of the numbers here. The speed at which we successfully completed digital initiatives, 1.8x 8, 8x times more effective. The speed at which we launched new digital initiatives, 2, 2x times more uh, effective. Ability to realize expected business value from digital initiatives, 2.1 times. Ability to respond to disruptions and better to be able to be more nimble in that, over two times more effective there as well. And the speed at which an idea makes it through the innovation funnel from that whole inception of the idea through us being able to uh, uh, get it into action is over 2.3 times um, the more effective. So tangible benefits for the organization, all of these aspects are um, uh, critical to becoming more effective and responsive to the marketplace. Now, what this means is there's opportunities to improve. It says here that, you know, if you just only focus on on time and on budget, you have no significant impact on achieving these business outcomes if you just focus on those things. You're that 1x group. And only 16% of organizations simultaneously achieve high effectiveness in all those three attributes of strategic portfolio management, meaning there's a big opportunity for us to improve as organizations here in the marketplace. In portfolio alignment, there's things like, you know, was the portfolio designed to strongly align with enterprise strategic objectives? Was it designed to balance the trade-offs between managing risks and driving innovation? Was the portfolio designed to effectively balance trade-offs between team and local enterprise outcomes? And just on the value-driven value, de value decision-making, there's improvements to be made there and the ongoing portfolio flexibility. You know, it, was it easy to pause unnecessary work that did not align with strategic goals? Sometimes it's hard to stop projects in some organizations or pause. It, was it easy to stop those same types of initiatives? Is it easy to allocate re, uh, reallocate resources and funds based upon a changing of the landscape? Uh, those are types of things that we need to think about. Are we good at those things? And, you know, can we get better? So the payoffs, you know, there's organizations that completely connect enterprise strategy to portfolio management, as we've mentioned, are three times more likely to demonstrate effective strategic portfolio management, but only 37% of organizations were shown to be uh, uh, effectively aligning resources with strategy and objectives. So the payoff from uh, being effective in aligning portfolio management processes with enterprise strategy, um, there was a three, uh, 0.2 times more effectiveness if you're able to do this. And the same thing with other related drivers. If we can proactively surface and communicate the tendencies and how different parts of the enterprise need to work together and coordinate across the enterprise, because oftentimes we do have silos in, in, in organizations, or be able to proactively communicate how the work of the solution delivery and technology teams actually connects to the overall strategy. You know, if we're moderately effective at this, really no, you know, no impact. If we're highly effective, meaning that we're able to proactively surface those dependencies and how uh, and identify how the enterprise needs to work together from different parts, there's a 2x uh, type of return on that. But as we mentioned earlier on, if you can then translate that into uh, uh, communicate how the work of the solution delivery and team connects to the company's overall strategy, a significant improvement or 5x improvement in the ability to deliver on those strategic goals. And getting those teams involved, right? The work of the solution delivery and technology teams, you know, if you're better connected with them on uh, the involvement in the reprioritization of work as the changes come down the mix, the survey looked at here, you look at the donut on the left-hand side, uh, the organizations that were surveyed, you know, only 15% of them said they were completely involved in those decisions. You know, 48% to a large extent, 32% to a moderate extent, and 6% to a small extent. But the payoff in involving them in the reprioritization decisions to the likelihood of achieving strategic portfolio management uh, is that if you were completely involved, there was a 2.7x two, 2 uh, improvement in that uh, achievement of SPM, where it diminishes quickly if it was just to a large extent down to you know, almost half of that. So the idea is there are payoffs in the effectiveness if we can uh, adopt these types of approaches. And that event-based approach where we basically trigger reprioritization based upon events rather than just on some cyclical quarterly thing. And it said that 60%, 7% of the organizations or respondents in here were on a quarterly reprioritization uh, cadence. The idea here is that that also can bring uh, better results to you 
uh, as you go through on the payoff. So, for example, if you um, um, uh, the payoff from increasing the effectiveness of reallocating resources based upon these triggering events, uh, you know, it goes up the scale up to 5x if you're able to reallocate resources based on changing strategic priorities. You know, whereas if you can at least identify under, underused and unused resources and allocate them appropriately, uh, or at least identify that, you know, there's a, over a 3x times return on that as well. So these are just things to consider uh, as we look at the solutions we're going to talk to you about today. Now, as we get into the solution on this, you know, many organizations have this siloing and it compounds itself when we think about the tools that are being used in organizations. Uh, a common scenario that we see when we talk to customers and we look at the different disciplines down the left-hand side here in the blue portfolio management, project management, resource management, and then the different organizational units across the top and look at the different tools they're using for execution to help an organization achieve corporate strategy when you have this kind of disconnection uh, and bringing that data together and not having common visibility is really a challenge for many organizations today. What we're going to show you today with the use of one plan, we can help consolidate these things such that put the portfolio management and the strategic portfolio management capabilities can all be consolidated and possibly interject maybe some execution tools at the execution level that feed into that. But the idea is having that reporting and that visibility across that all and understanding the relationships is something that we can harness and bring more uh, consolidation and sanity to all that. So one plan really enables strategic portfolio management as we talked about the technology being an enabling factor and bringing in the strategy, the execution and the technology components to really come together in overall strategic portfolio management. We think about the business leaders, right, who have to develop that strategy and execute on that strategy. We have the execution leaders who have to actually uh, perform on the projects and the initiatives that uh, ideally will support those strategies. And then the dimension, if you add this even further, to the IT leaders that own the assets and the technologies and the solutions and the applications that need to be factored in uh, when we actually uh, change course or we go in a different direction and these are impacted or constraining factors. This is a, a, an area of SPM maturity that we need to factor in. So the business leaders uh, have the strategy and we have applications or solutions for mapping out that strategy and executing on that strategy with objectives and key results and even value stream mapping. We actually have on the execution side, a number of different portfolio management capabilities, depending on the type of business you're in, whether it be doing more agile portfolio management, more adaptive, which is more mixed methodology and mixed, mixed tool sets, professional services, or whether it be a product portfolio management aspect. We have, there's tools and uh, approaches to that that feed into portfolio management that, uh, that bring in the SPM discipline. And then the IT leaders, there's that aspect that we really have to have potentially your overall enterprise architecture or maybe your application portfolio that needs to feed into those types of things. We need to have solutions that feed into that and one plan enables things in this area. So if we think about just visualizing the need for strategic alignment a little bit more, let's just take a single strategy or a single objective that might be part of an overall uh, strategic plan. Like say we want to grow revenue by 15%. Well, if we think of that, there may be tangible key results or metrics that we want to track that support uh, our visibility and tracking of whether or not we're on track to achieve that goal. And these are the tangible measures that we might wanna have to support that to help gauge our progress. And then there might be from an enterprise architecture perspective a capability of say order processing that we need to uh, address or uh, improve uh, through this initiative. And then within that, there might be applications that we have in, in our application portfolio that are critical to supporting that capability of ordering pro order processing. And then we then consider initiatives or projects for the order processing program in this case, where we might have enhancements, right? Uh, in, in IT projects, we might have um, a more of a marketing uh, capability or an epic that we have campaigns to on. And we might have a, uh, a solution uh, project that has to fit into that mix, but look at the way they all interrelate. Uh, they're related to the enterprise architecture, they're related to the key results, which ultimately are resulting uh, into an alignment with the strategy or the business objective. So to factor all this in requires some capabilities, and we're gonna show you today how one plan 
has the strategic execution planning capability and the alignment of those strategies, along with the enterprise architecture dimensions that we might want to uh, align things with, as well as the por project portfolio or initiatives that we have that align with all those as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Paul Estabrooks, who'll give you a demonstration of these things in action and how these are all here and available for you today. Thank you, Jim. So I'm going to start, Jim just sort of set that up, and I'm, I'm going to sort of walk through what you're seeing there. And I'm going to start with the strategy, talk a little bit about the enterprise architecture, and then I'm going to spend a bunch of time in the portfolio and getting into some of that prioritization and optimization that, that Jim covered in his slides. But kind of walk you through that very example that uh, we just showed you visually in that slide. So here I've got a group of objectives. We focused in on, on an example of one in that, in that slide, but imagine in most organizations there'd be, there'd be a bunch and they might be organized by department or by line of business or something of that nature. In this case, we've got uh, well, that six or seven objectives that we want to accomplish this year. Underneath those objectives are a set of key results. So there are key results linked to each of them that says, if we can go and accomplish this, uh, you know, if we can achieve these key results, we'll have met the objective. That's the whole goal. And so if I drill into one of those key results just quickly, it's obviously related to the objective above it. It has a couple of initiatives that are tied to it. It might have some other things that are tied to it too. But what I want to highlight as we go through that is uh, the, the overall sort of sets of linkages between these three aspects, the, the business strategy, the architecture, and, and the execution. So here's where you see that to start is some of the execution initiatives are tied to this particular key result. Okay, that sort of makes sense, right? We've captured a bunch of other data about this key result and so forth. And we could status this, we can progress this. You could see here where we are and sort of current metrics and so forth. So we're statusing this. We might be pulling that status in from other data. We know what projects are critical to it. So that's our strategy. We have objectives and we have key results and we can link those to the architecture as well as to the portfolio. So now if I just jump down here quickly to the architecture and I'm going to just pick all types just so we can show a little more data. I'm gonna open up my current architecture. We've got a couple of applications in here, some products and some capabilities. We might have other things in here too. We could have things like um, value streams and so forth that we might do. Things that we are tracking that make up our business architecture and the, the core assets that we use in how we deliver the services we provide to our customers, the products we produce, as well as how we execute our business. So if I drill into one of these so we can dig a little deeper on the on this linkage is here, you could see this particular application is tied to two different objectives and a group of initiatives. So these initiatives are potentially investing in that application. They might be implementing it. As Jim's example showed, one of those projects was implementing the picking system, for example. Uh, they could be modifying this uh, and so forth, or they may just be dependent upon that application. We need that application to be uh, in good service for what we want to accomplish in, in executing on this particular initiative and achieving a specific key result. So we provide that visibility here at the enterprise architecture level. Now we'll jump into the portfolio. If I jump in here, here's my full portfolio. In Jim's little example to set this up, we had created a program and that program had a couple of projects that were agile epics. It had one that was waterfall, with two different departments delivering on those. So you could see that sort of ex expanded here in this view. I've got every program in here, some of which are tied to different portfolios, has a combination of projects and epics. They're using different delivery tools. They might be owned by different departments, but they're all part of a greater objective. And we've organized those objectives hierarchically into this program portfolio model. And so we might have a program owner and they're executing on all of this information underneath it, but they're engaging multiple audiences, all of whom maybe work a little bit differently in terms of that execution. So classic adaptive project management. If I drill into one of these, today where I wanna sort of focus is in here, I've got my standard information about this project. It's got financials, it's got a resource plan and so forth. But what it also has, if I open up this, is this is where all that linkage information really comes into play. You could see here, this particular project is tied to two different objectives. It's tied more specifically to three specific associated results. 
and it's we've split the budget across those three, 30, 50, 20. And in doing so, we're helping the organization understand the overall investment in achieving a specific key result. That would roll up to the overall investment in accomplishing the objective. But we'll go further and say that this particular project is also linked to three associated applications. And so far, we're not done splitting because that doesn't add up to 100. So far, we have associated the budget to those applications, which gives us the ability to track and understand the total cost of ownership of each application. As we have multiple projects that might be touching these apps in some way, we can assign the relative portion of the budget accordingly. And down below, we have two products of the organization, and here we just split it 50-50. So we've, we've split this budget in multiple ways, depending on the perspective or the reporting that we want to do. But now we have that line of sight. I know what initiatives are tied to what key results. I know what key results are in place to, to sort of measure and, and demonstrate accomplishment of core objectives. And I know what parts of the enterprise architecture are critical to all of that being coming true and all that happening. So now I'm gonna drive back out to the portfolio this particular view, same view, I just added some columns to it. If I expand those columns, you could see here, I have that visibility as I get into my planning and prioritization exercise to know what are the associated objectives and what are the associated applications of the two columns I chose to add to this view. So as I'm making decisions on where my investments are gonna go, and I'm gonna show that in a second, or how I'm gonna deploy resources, I have that visibility that when I go to put a project on hold, let's say, uh, or one that's proposed, I understand immediately what project, what objective I'm impacting or what objective this proposed project would help accomplish. Because if management determined that this was our number one objective, then this proposal probably needs to be activated and we might need to choose something else in the list to put on hold in order to provide the necessary budget and resources we would need to accomplish that. But we're doing it in an informed decision based on priority or based on objectives and the linkage of them. If I drill in a little bit further, and go down to associated results, sure, here we go. I'm gonna pick this particular key result. So now I have focused my prioritization, because if someone said to me, we need to accomplish this, I could know immediately, well, which key results are tied to that? I filtered my whole list so I could see that. Well, here's my issue. Only two of those projects are actually active right now. So if that key result was critical for us to accomplish, we needed to get to there. Two projects are on hold and two are proposed. I, I need to act immediately and make sure that those proposed projects get activated and we figure out how to get these on hold ones off hold. And that's gonna lead to some decisions I need to make around how else I might, um, what else I need to put on hold or what budgets I might need and so forth, but I'm making that as an informed decision. And, and maybe a quarter from now, another key result will bubble to the top because of a, a change in the business climate. Well, I can quickly pivot this and understand, okay, what initiatives are tied to that result? What is their current status? And how do I need to shift my priorities, shift my budgets, shift my people, ask for more money, uh, make those critical investments in order to accomplish those items? because I understand how everything is linked together to accomplish that. I'm gonna take that filter off just so I wanna use a bit more extra data. I'd say, you know, if I wanted to run this, and Jim showed this where I could look at my resource plan, and you could see we've got roles that are clearly over allocated. And that may come down to, uh, if I go zoom to quarters here, just so I can see this a little bit better, I could start to move some projects around and say maybe if we delayed that project, we would sort of gain some, some benefit here with respect to resourcing. I'm not gonna try and solve for this right here in this call or in this demo, but the idea being we can quickly pivot and redirect resources, understand where we have bottlenecks based on what projects become important or what projects are put on hold and prioritization accordingly so that I know where I am and what resources I need to uh, re-engage or redeploy really is the word I'm looking for. And I can run this consistently. And then I can save that scenario up here. I can just say, save the scenario and go back to it a quarter from now and say, you know, where are we today compared to where we thought we would be? And has anything changed in the business climate? And if so, how does that transpose into this and what changes do we need to make? I'll end the demo by just jumping into, we've added some new reports to our reporting capability. We 
continue to sort of invest here. First of all, I might want to look at my overall objective portfolio and see how I'm doing, see my objective progress. How are we progressing? We're doing really well on this objective. We're not doing so well here. And that may drive those prioritization decisions when we see that. If I jump down to the key results, you can see the whole key results. I'm going to jump to the status. I always like this view. You can see the ones that are doing really, really well. But if I look down towards the bottom, there's some that aren't progressing nearly where at the pace we want. And if they're truly important and they are linked to specific objectives that we need to accomplish that are high priority, then we're going to need to divert some of our attention and our resources, uh, both budget and people, to make sure that we get those back on track. So we have these views to help guide those decisions. But then we've started to create some new views where I could come in here and look at an associated application. So if I wanted to quickly understand uh, that accounting one that I opened up earlier, here's all of the projects and programs and ultimately the portfolios that are attached to that particular application. I could then look at that you know, in a decomposition tree and see that differently. So if I go look at the application again, and I could see sort of where does that fit? I've got other views here that I can use. Maybe I wanna do it based on associated objectives. So here I wanna go view in an objective. That brand awareness objective wasn't doing so well. Well, what are the initiatives that are tied to that? So very quickly, just kind of working right to left, if you will, I associate what's that objective, and visually I can see immediately where are the, what, are the, what are the projects or initiatives we have undergo, what programs, or in this case there are three of them that are touching that, and so forth. And I can start to understand where we are in our organization. So we create these views to help you better understand it more visually, but we have all of that data because it starts with an understanding of what is the strategy, what are our, what's our architecture that supports our business where we need to invest and adjust and move forward with in order to accomplish our strategy? And what are the initiatives we're undertaking? Which ones uh, attach which strategies and which objectives so that we can understand as things evolve and the business changes, we can quickly pivot and make those decisions and reprioritize how we're deploying resources with clear visibility into the impact we're having and making sure that an enabling project that might be in another portfolio is still in play because of its, its connection to and it, the role it plays in the architecture and or the strategy. We're not limited to a narrow focus. We're able to have a broad one and clearly understand how everything is impacting, how we're gonna get to where we want to go. And Jim, with that, I'll turn it back to you. All right, terrific. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for that great overview. Uh, so let's summarize and talk about some potential next steps you can take. Um, here, just from the topics that we covered here today, you know, just to summarize that traditional PPM has provided significant advances for organizations, but it's really time that we kind of move the ball forward into SPM. And SPM is now not replacing, but it's expanding on PPM and adapting for the modern digital businesses and the challenges and the threats and the opportunities that we face uh, accordingly. And SPM brings together business capabilities, investments, programs, digital and physical products, applications, and projects, all as dimensions to factor into our prioritization and uh, things to support our strategic plans. And uh, achieving effective SPM drives significant increases in business outcomes. And one plan provides the most complete set of SPM capabilities on the Microsoft platform today. So if you are a Microsoft shop, we have some things that can plug into uh, what you're doing very readily. Um, we talk about these things because this is our passion and our focus. Even though we're a multi-gold certified Microsoft partner, our focus is really on project and portfolio management. And we are their current uh, global project and portfolio management partner of the year. Uh, and we've won that multiple times. So we're recognized by Microsoft in this discipline as a leader, as well as recognized by uh, analysts like Gartner and Infotech and uh, Scaled Agile Inc. for the folks that take more agile approaches to this. And also recognized as uh, one of the 30 most reputable companies of the year in 2022. So we're proud to say that we're recognized as a leader and our focus in project portfolio management is why we do these topics. We do these webinars very routinely, almost weekly. And next week we have one that really uh, takes on another dimension of the strategic portfolio management message and how digital organizations are transforming to strategic portfolio management, followed the following week by strategic portfolio management for enterprise agile. So people that are doing scaled or enterprise agile in their organizations, how does this map to what they're doing in that discipline as well? 
So feel free to go to oneplan.ai slash webinars where you can register for these as well as look at our vast library of past uh, recorded on-demand webinars that you can have, uh, have a look-see as well. Um, you can get a free trial of, of the One Plan capabilities. You know, we have uh, different templates out there. We do have a strategic portfolio management template as well as an adaptive portfolio management template out there, for example. Uh, but feel free to go out there on Microsoft's App Source and download a trial, and we're happy to connect with you and chaperone you through that trial process to help you get the most out of it. Also, we do offer a free roadmap workshop where people can uh, engage us to kind of talk about a, at a high level, you know, your current use of solutions and tools, you know, assess your current requirements and the desired future state of where you'd like to get to, and determine what it might take uh, from a roadmap and from a tool perspective to migrate into a new solution in those disciplines. Uh, and even get you an evaluation of total cost of ownership. Uh, and in the Microsoft sphere, you may own a, a chunk of what you already need to do some of these things. So that it may be an incremental investment on your part, but we can help you determine that as well. So from a next steps perspective, please do engage us on a free trial. Do reach out for the roadmap workshop if you're interested. But if you're not at that stage of your level of interest yet, uh, we gave you a very high level overview demo today. Um, we're happy to schedule with you a more personalized one-on-one -on -one demo for your organization that addresses your specific requirements and use cases. So please reach out for uh, reach out to us if you'd like to, to to have one of those. You can get us generally at contact at oneplan.ai. You can check out more about us at www.oneplan.ai. But also feel free to reach out to Paul or myself if you have questions that you'd like to um, uh, address with us individually. Um, at One Plan, we just like to thank you. Uh, for attending and taking your time out of your valuable day uh, for us. Uh, we are invested in success, and by that we mean we're invested in our customer success. So hopefully we can provide you um, um, a singular interface for the things we talked about today, one user experience, and really provide one plan for all these dimensions. So with that, we really do like uh, uh, to engage with our customers, and if we can help you in any way, don't be bashful about reaching out. You guys have a great day.